Hi, this screencast is going to walk through adding elements to a web form. Name's Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintained the web form module for Drupal 8. What's an element? An element is something that is defined using a render array and displayed on a page or a form. And we'll get into render arrays, but I just want to kind of give some examples of what a markup element, what a form element is. So, you know, like a bulleted list, a link, a table, horizontal rules. Specifically with web forms, now we're starting to talk about text fields, field sets, check boxes. Even a signature in a composite would be considered just an element. And so what is a render array? Render arrays are the building blocks of a Drupal page. That is what makes up everything you see on the page. These are little PHP arrays, and we're going to get into it. And, you know, they, they define a renderable element, what's displayed. And these things are described using properties, like what's the title of a form element or what's the default value. We're talking about form elements. And, you know, all everything in Drupal is alterable, so forms are alterable. Render arrays go out to, you know, the theme layer. That's alterable. You can use pre-processing functions. And everything at the end of the day is rendered using Twig templates. And just a little extra details is properties always begin with a hash. And elements in forms always have keys. It's an important thing. You know, you got to give it a name. A key is almost like the machine name. And th this is a render array as YAML. This is a form. But I'm just, this is when you're going to edit your form. You can see this source and name is the key. I'm going to get into it a little bit more, but you see title, your name, the type. And what's important when I'm going to go back and forth between these two slides is this is YAML and this is PHP, exact same data, same thing. The only thing different in PHP is the titles are being translated using the this T function. But otherwise, the data is exactly the same and it'll render exactly the same. And this is kind of the anatomy of an element or anything that's being rendered. So you have your input name, the title, the type of field, and you can also add some attributes. In this example, I'm adding a background color, I'm adding a custom class. And I'm showing this to you so that when you're trying to edit the source, you start to understand what you're looking at, how things are break, broken down. It's very important. Nothing's unique about when you edit the source. That This is how Drupal renders data. This is how it builds it. So once you start understanding how to edit the source behind a, a a web form, you're actually kind of becoming a developer because you're learning how Drupal works. And now we're going to see that that information that I just showed you, and go back for a second because I talked a little too long. You know, we have background color we want to set, we want to set a title, and it renders this element, a form element. Your name, the input's got is yellowed, and you can see the classes are coming through, the label right here is coming through, and what else? Input type, name. And just, I wanted to show that to you to give you kind of what's going on under the hood. What is an element? So, but what are web form elements? And, you know, web form elements are render arrays, um, which contain, you know, elements, well, web forms are render arrays that contain elements that are, you know, built, validated, and submitted using Drupal's form API. Basically, it's a simple object that then gets wrapped in a form API that does the building, validating, and submitting of a form. Each element actually goes through this process as well. And, you know, this is a web form element in the UI. It's just kind of, you're setting all the properties um, and what it's going to look like. And, you know, the anatomy of a form element, well, you have your definition. What's the name of the element, the cardinality, the defaults, and then you're kind of labeling, like the title, description, help text. And then you can adjust the display of it. You can add a prefix. You can change the size of a text field. And then you start getting into validation. Is it required? Is it unique? Is there a pattern? Is there a counter? So it gets into a lot of stuff. You also can do conditional logic for all elements and hide and show them, Whether they also set whether they're required or disabled. And elements, each element has its own access rules, which we might not get too far into, but it's just the idea that you can say who can edit and look at this different elements. And you can even get into custom attributes and properties. Uh, a little tricky to demo, but you can, well, let's do a demo. Um, I'm going to start with a contact form. I'm going to go in. I'm just trying to show you elements. So you, if you go to add element, this gives you a really good idea of all your elements. But let's just look at one like the text field. It opens up in the sidebar. And you can see, you know, your name, the cardinality. This is already collected data, so you can't change the number of values. But you can change the element type. You can add help text. And you know what I like doing? This is a good demo. Ready? We're here. I'm going to hit Add. 
We're going to go back to the text field. I just recommend everyone does this. Is you type text field, and you start filling it out. So we'll 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 do multiple. Yeah, let's keep it one. But you go in and you just start saying this is help text, and you start seeing what's going to happen. This is a description. This is a little slow, but I I hope this and uh, read more. Here's more. Filling it out, you can change how the title is displayed, where the description, if it's before or after, all these things you can go in. You know, I don't, you know, the example would be if you're doing a currency field, you could put a dollar sign and dot zero at the end. You can set some lengths, you can set the size, placeholders. Please enter. Sorry, my typing's not great. You can disable the auto completion. You can add input mass. You can mark it read only. You can have it pre populated through the query string. I know this is a lot. You have to gradually go through it. You can set required. This is a custom required message. You can decide if the value is going to be unique. I can do the counter. That's actually, let's do character counter and limit it to 255. We could use the default. It actually shows you the default when you hover over. So that we've just gone through everything about a text field. This is just a text field. And then you can do conditional logic and say, show it if visible, if someone enters a value or check the value. I'm not going to too much further than that. I'm going to go over to advanced. You can also set the default value. Not often. You can add wrapper attributes. So what goes around the form. I've generally demo it like where I'm going to just put a warning where I want someone to really fill this out. You can get into the element and add custom classes and styles to the element. This gets keeps going and going. You can control how the data is also displayed. Finally, you can also get into just entering custom properties. Since I just showed you you can do properties, you can go in and add attributes and details to this, this form element. Sometimes you add attributes just for tracking. I'm not going to go any further into that. Now, finally, Access controls. Most people don't use this. If you create an admin form, you want someone to have a certain field that they can edit when they're after the forms come through and admin comes in and needs to add some extra data, they can do that. You can say only this person can update this field or element. I'm going to hit save. And, and by the way, one cool thing is you go into source and you can see it. this is all the crazy things we just did. And now we can actually go into, I want to go back because I, you know, every single property we set. Now you go into view and you could see your new element. And do I think you should turn on every feature like we just did? Probably not. But it gives you just the idea of you got to experiment with this stuff. So what are the different types of web form elements? We literally only just looked at text fields. Well, there's inputs, which is a text field. There's containers, which will hold elements together like um, elements together like a field set composites or groups of elements working together like an address and there's these computed elements which are kind of useful if you need to combine two elements or calculate a score um, you can use tokens and twigs within computed elements and finally for multi-step form there are pages now there's the types of inputs we kind of hinted at there's text options are select menus radios checkboxes there's file uploads and I'm just calling widgets all the little nuanced ones like a signature or rating element. And finally, there's entity references, so you can reference content nodes, users on your site. Containers, we kind of talked about. You can do a section, field set details, flex boxes for multi-column layout. And there's examples of all this, and we're going to get to those. Composites, these are good examples of composites, like a Likert element, an address, um, links, names. And you can actually build your own custom composite elements in the UI. I probably won't go in that in that direction right now, but you should explore that. And this is a really important slide is the example style guide included in the web form examples module is very helpful and completely customizable. So you can go in and just experiment and you can change that style guide for your needs. And you can also preview every element as you're adding it to a form. And I'm going to just demo these two features and let's see where we are right now. I'm going to go back. I'm going to do the demo of the preview first. Is we go to add element. You can see all the different elements here. This is much faster because there's no preview. But if you click show preview, you're going to get a quick example of every element that you could possibly add, including a working signature, telephone, contact, the the range element. Just get, you know, as you're starting out, this is very useful. I don't usually keep it on. I turn it off. It's a little faster because you're not rendering all that extra information. 
I more importantly, when I'm demoing this module to people, I go up to this style guide over here. And there's examples of everything here, but let's just look at the style guide. Sorry, it took a second to get to. So it has multi-step turned on. This can be used by your designers to understand, you know, as you're designing your theme, they can see what the progress bar is going to look like, how the required is going to look. Adding basic, here's the basic elements. And we're pretty familiar with this, how help text is going to look. Very useful for debugging. If you turn on your, you know, you've installed the module and you have an existing theme, you need to go to this page and see what's really happening with the rendering. Um, and you get, you know, text formats, everything you see. These are all the elements available. There's table selection, there's buttons, there's ratings, there's, it goes on and on and on. There's a terms of service. I forgot, oh, this does a, a dialogue. You can control that to be a slide out. Here's a Likert. And there's your entity references. And finally, towards the end, we got our composites here. And towards the end, you start getting your styles. Like, how is it going to lay out? These are just different examples of how required is going to look, disabled is going to look, how the help text. There's also an inline, where is that? Oh, I want to show it because it's nice. Well, that's a tooltip, display inline. Here's this one, where you get a tooltip when you focus on the element as well. Um, finally, there's your containers, multi-column, all your dividers. You can build inline messages as well. I know this is a lot to digest, and you should come back to this page and explore it. So, yeah, we're at the end, and I think the most, I just said, you got to go back to that page, explore it, and look at the previews and the style guides. Get familiar with the inputs. That'll help you understand what you can create. Um, and then you should create a web form and go through a couple of these inputs and set all the properties and the composites and see how they work. Um, and if you have a long form, convert it to a multi-step form. Add the pages. See how it works. And, you know, you can then go into the nuance of customizing that multi-step form. And, and for some more advanced users, you should go create a custom composite element. And then you can also explore just how to customize every button on the multi-step wizard. You can add custom language for each page as you're going through it. It's a lot to digest. Take your time and have fun with it. Learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Thank you.